time she'd escaped. We were looking around, there were lots of airplanes there. And she finally pointed out the Super Cub that she said that the guy was trying to put her into. Authorities run the plane's registration and find it belongs to Robert Hansen, a 40-year-old award-winning hunter and local businessman. He owned a bakery, well-established business person with friends, and he was a church-going man. Uh, an awful lot of people uh, believed in him. When questioned by police, Hansen is outraged. He says he never met the woman and insists she's making up the story to extort money from him. And he questions the woman's credibility, asking police if it's even possible to rape a prostitute. He was being taken advantage of by this prostitute who was in the business of taking advantage of people, right? She's transient. He's a member of the community. He's, he's got his business here in town. And he has an alibi. He tells police that his wife and children were on vacation in Europe, but that he spent the evening with two friends. When questioned, the men substantiate his story. They swore Hansen was with them playing poker that night. Uh, he was with me. We were hanging out at my house. If we need anything else, we'll be in contact. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Hansen even allows police to search his home. Authorities find no evidence to corroborate the woman's allegations. The things that she said were there weren't there. I don't see anything. The trophies, the, the animal trophies, weren't there. The basement was as she described it, but none of the trophies were there, and there was no scratch marks, I guess, on the beams or nothing. So her story didn't make sense. The young girl refuses to take a polygraph, and investigators are left to wonder if she may have fabricated the bizarre tale. It was a he said, she said. There was no sexual assault protocol where every victim went to the sexual assault unit and, and was examined. There's no DNA. There's no hairs and fibers. And I hate what he did to me. There was nothing there that you could put your finger on that was really solid proof. Citing a lack of evidence, the prosecutor drops the case. Three months later, Alaska state troopers discover the partially decomposed remains of another woman in a shallow grave along the bank of the Kanik River. She is identified as another missing dancer who was last seen alive earlier that month. Even more disturbing, police find a makeshift blindfold buried among the remains. An autopsy reveals something more sinister. Like the other victims, Paula Golding had also been shot by a 223 caliber bullet. In many cases, the victims were not even known to be missing because they were never reported to the police. In many instances, the victims were never found. So how do you link a case with a victim who's never found? The killer in this case killed in a variety of ways. So where is the, where is the ability to link the cases until he started killing consistently with the 223 caliber? Police are now faced with a terrifying and unthinkable thought. Might these women have been stalked and hunted like animals by a lone madman? And might the woman who got away be the sole survivor, the one who miraculously escaped the clutches of a killer? Get more Alaska Ice Cold Killers online at investigationdiscovery.com. I didn't think I'd find anything, but I went on Ancestry.com, and this little leaf led me to all these records. And I found out my great-great-grandmother had five children and only one survived. You know, it can be so easy to forget just how lucky you are. Visit Ancestry.com and discover the world's largest online family history resource. You don't have to know what you're looking for. You just have to start looking. Your discovery starts right now on Ancestry.com. 
If your child is falling behind in school, if your child struggles with math or reading, let your child blossom at Sylvan. Sylvan Learning Centers, an individualized approach tailored for each child to build exactly the skills your child needs to succeed. Guaranteed to improve math or reading skills by one full grade level equivalent in 36 hours of instruction. If you want to see results guaranteed, you could call 800-331-8395 and get this free introductory DVD and let your child blossom at Sylvan. You must be 18 or older to call. What did I walk into this room for? Your sunglasses. Need a memory boost? Now there's BrainStrong with Life's DHA, clinically shown to improve adult memory. Can you tell me why I came in here? You never listen to me. BrainStrong. Nourish your brain. We asked real people if they'd help us with an experiment for Febreze Fabric Refresher. They agreed. Relax, take some nice deep breaths. What do you smell? Lilac. Clean. There's something that's really fresh. A little bit beachy. Like children's blankets. It smells like home. OK, take your blindfolds off. Hello? And now new and improved Febreze Fabric Refresher with up to two times the odor elimination, so you can breathe happy, guaranteed. Do you use a CPAP mask to sleep at night? If you have Medicare or private insurance, U.S. Med can provide you with a new CPAP mask as well as filters and tubing whenever you need them for little or no cost to you. It is important that you replace your mask and supplies on a regular basis to avoid infections, bacteria, and leaking. The major manufacturers have recently introduced new and improved masks that are smaller and softer to provide maximum comfort and a better fit. My new mask is so much better than the old mask. Now I can sleep through the night. In addition to your new CPAP mask, if you've had your machine for over five years, US Med may now be able to provide you with a new CPAP machine at little or no cost to you. These new machines are quieter, smaller, and even blow less air when you exhale for easier breathing. Now we can enjoy our life more fully. Call now to see if you qualify to receive a new CPAP mask or CPAP machine from U.S. Med today. Investigate. Next on the premiere of Dark Minds, seven women are abducted from public places in New England and brutally murdered. I can remember the space looking right down at me. As investigators go on a multi-year manhunt, a victim comes forward with her remarkable story of survival. The expression on his face, it was just so cold. But they'll need the help of an incarcerated serial killer called 13 to solve this cold case. Dark Minds, series premiere next on Investigation Discovery. Alaska state troopers are now completely convinced a serial killer is on the loose. But they have no idea how many victims lay dead in the vast and rugged wilderness. There's plenty of ways to get rid of people and evidence in this country. Right behind me is the mountains, and over the top of that mountain is 800 miles to the Bering Sea. And there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. Hard to fathom. Troopers contact the Federal Bureau of Investigation for assistance. In response, the FBI turns the case over to its Behavioral Science Unit. Agents begin to create a profile of the potential killer. They are able to glean valuable insight into the killer's mind by studying the clues he repeatedly left behind, like the 223 caliber shell casings. Was it careless on his part? If so, it would not have been a trait that we would expect in an organized serial killer. I think it happened because he had a sense of narcissistic invincibility. And consequently, I think he began to believe that he was, in fact, invincible. Invincible, perhaps, because he chose the perfect victims, the transient girls of Fourth Avenue, who he thought no one would miss. He's a loner, he has no accomplices, he's not talking to anybody. It's dead-end case. It's one dead-end case right after dead-end case. At the insistence of local authorities, the profilers take a closer look at Robert Hansen. They find he was raised by very strict parents and had a rather difficult childhood. Juno! Right with your left hand! He was naturally left-handed, 
they forced him to use his right hand. Right with your right hand, that's what God's will is for you. Do you understand me? Hanson had very low self-esteem. Anytime he had free time from school, he was expected to be working in the father's bakery. His will is to write with Adding right to hand. such strain, Hanson was always considered small for his age and had few friends. He was known as a loner. He also had a very bad case of acne, which resulted in a pockmarked face. Do you understand? And he stuttered I'm badly. Sorry, All those things contributed to his being ridiculed by his classmates. After graduating high school, he enlisted in the Army Reserve and underwent basic training at Fort Dix. He later received advanced training as a military police officer at Fort Knox. And so here's the money. While Let's enlisted, like he was known to frequent prostitutes. But he reportedly found the girls disinterested, the quick romps unsatisfying, and told fellow soldiers that he yearned to take control of the situation. Bye. Despite his strict upbringing and disciplined military structure, the profilers learned Hansen had a number of run-ins with the law. He served time for arson and theft, but appeared to have long since left that life behind. In 1967, he married and moved to Alaska. Now a father of two, Hansen was considered an upstanding member of the community. Back in the day, in 1983, 84, we didn't know as much about serial killers. So if we came across somebody like Hansen, we might put him aside and continue to look for the serial killer. Why? because he's a functioning member of society. But the profilers take note of Hansen's small stature, heavily pockmarked skin, and severe speech impediment. They believe his low self-esteem would likely drive him to live in an isolated area like Alaska. The profilers are also intrigued by Hansen's reputation as a proficient hunter. Everyone in town knew he'd taken out a doll sheep with a crossbow, including Hanson's former neighbor, Larry Bivens, who often hunted with him. I think he liked the thrill of the hunt, and he liked the, the sneaking up on him to get as close as he could where he could make that shot, which is what all bow hunters enjoy, because that's the challenge. That's the challenge of, of bow hunting, is getting close. Hansen even had four animals entered into a renowned world record trophy hunting book. Bob was always looking for the challenge, a tougher hunt. You know, a tougher animal, a bigger animal, because he always wanted to do better than the last one. You know, and most big trophy hunters are like that. When questioned by police, Hansen's hunting buddy reveals a disturbing exchange with his neighbor. I remember one time we started talking about women and things, and I started getting a little coarse and risque with him about it. He seemed to take offense, and he got a little upset with me and stuttered and spit a little bit, and saliva come down the corner of his mouth, and that's that would, but that was just Bob. You know, sometimes he was okay, sometimes he was just a little bit straight. <laughs> Every psychopath has a weak point, and Hanson's weak point would have been women. Why? Because number one, he was unsuccessful with them. Number two, they ridiculed him. Number three, they, they presented something that he was afraid of, literally afraid of, fearful of. Bivens also tells police Hanson liked to hunt the island sandbars of the Kanik River, the very place where most of the victims had been found. When I told them I had been on those islands with him, and they got real excited. You know, you can get away with whatever you want to do on those islands, and nobody's going to know it, because there's nobody there. Perhaps Hansen tired of wild game and turned his attention to more interesting prey, humans. They would have presented a greater challenge, because 
An animal reacts instinctively to danger, whereas humans have the capacity to employ reason, logic, and intelligence. Humans are very individualistic, and they'll engage in a variety of ways to evade danger. So they present a much greater challenge to the hunter. If Hansen is the killer, the FBI concludes, he may be hoarding the evidence needed for a conviction, small souvenirs or trophies from his victims. And they'll need those to put him away. Police begin to fear that maybe the woman who escaped was telling the truth. Investigators believe their killer is a hunter, like Hansen, who knows Alaska's wild country. But without evidence linking him to the murders, they are powerless to stop him. A sexual sadist is the great white shark among sexual offenders. They're the least common type of serial killer. They're the most proficient, and they're the most successful over a period of time. criminal profiler like John Kelly needs help, so he turns to an expert. I would say he's well-dressed, confident. Someone who knows exactly what goes on inside the mind of a serial killer. Because he is one. It takes a killer to catch a killer. Dark Minds, all new series, premieres next, only on Investigation Discovery. Oh, I see. A throne for the TV, room for movies, your uh, workout gear, nonstop football. It's a man cave. The boys next door will never leave. Who says we want them to? Who's that? That's the guy who gets his salsa from New York City. New York City? Around here, there's only one word for salsa. Pace. Pay the right way for that big, bold kick. Grab the Southwest by the bottle. I lost 62 pounds on Jenny. I have two kids, and this is the first thing I've done since I'm a mom that was all for me. I came to a point in my life where I needed to put myself first. Jenny just offered a really quick, easy solution that was delicious. I love to eat. I love my pasta. I love my rice. I love all things chocolate. Jenny's foods are out of this world. I absolutely love the pasta. This, this is my Jenny. This is my Jenny. This is my Jenny. This is my Jenny. <laughs> If you're like my patients, you want to hear you've done a good job caring for your mouth. That's why I recommend a rinse like Crest Pro Health Multi Protection. It helps you get a better dental checkup. Because not all rinses provide all these benefits. So be ready for your next dental checkup. Crest Pro Health Multi Protection Rinse. Try any Crest Pro Health Rinse. Complete satisfaction guarantee, or we'll buy it back. When it comes to home insurance, surprises can be a little scary. And a little costly. That's why the best agents present their clients with a lot of options. Because when it comes to what's covered and what's not, nobody likes surprises. <laughs> we totally thought you were Obscure space junk falling from the sky? We covered that. Moving on. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Attention. Did you or a loved one take Topamax, Depakote, or its generic topiramate while pregnant? Research has found mothers who took Topamax or Depakote while pregnant have higher than expected rates of babies born with cleft palates, cleft lips, and other oral and facial deformities. If you took Topamax or Depakote during pregnancy and your child was born with a birth defect, you may be entitled to compensation. Call now. 1-800-235-6161. 1-800-235-6161. Attention Actos users. Did you or a loved one take the diabetic medication Actos and were later diagnosed with bladder cancer? Actos consumers have an increased risk of bladder cancer and related symptoms include dark urine, frequent urination, infections, and painful urination. According to the FDA, high usage of the diabetes medication Actos may be linked to an increased risk of bladder cancer in Actos users. If you took Actos and were diagnosed with bladder cancer, then call 800-847-2422. 
you crave it. You think about it all the time. The first step is admitting you're addicted to watching Investigation Discovery. You're not alone. At IDAddicts.com, get exclusive access to all things ID, connecting you to other addicts who can't get enough of ID, just like you. Welcome to IDAddicts.com. Hear the actual testimony and experience the final verdicts that brought the world's most infamous killers to justice. He didn't deserve to live. Killer Trials, Judgment Day, all new series premieres Friday, February 3rd at 10, only on Investigation Discovery. Authorities in Anchorage, Alaska are desperate to identify a serial killer before another murder occurs. Robert Hansen, a local baker, is the prime suspect. Hoping to crack the case, police come up with a daring strategy. Authorities threaten to press charges against the two men who claim they'd been playing poker with Hansen the night the dancer was abducted. Both quickly break down. They said, look, it's not, we were trying to cover for the guy. We thought he was a legitimate guy. We figured, you know, that these women were exploiting him and uh, we were just trying to help a friend. Armed with the new information, investigators follow Hanson to work. They ask him to come to the police station for questioning. He willingly agrees, never asking investigators a single question. At the same time, investigators serve a search warrant on Hansen's house. Despite an exhaustive search, they come up empty. Then, just as authorities are about to call it a day, an officer searching the attic rafters stumbles upon something shocking. He covered hundreds of square feet until he finally hit it. His fingers yeah, felt this little hollowed out cache and he opened it up and there was a bag of jewelry. From the group. Nestled along Hansen's stash of trophies, investigators make another chilling discovery. They uncover identification cards belonging to the victims and newspaper clippings. Hansen derived the same amount of pleasure from viewing that jewelry or looking at those driver's license or identification cards as he did from looking at the animals he had mounted in his den. They represented accomplishment in his life. Authorities also find a map with specific locations marked off. It's what I call a trophy map, a treasure map, if you will. He didn't take trophies from every single victim but he did have this map where he could mark his kills, if you will. It also allowed him to refresh his memory as to where he had disposed of the bodies, in case, I think, in case he wanted to go back to see if they'd been found or to relive the experience by looking at or touching what was remaining of the body. But the most critical find Let's take a look at this. Is a 223 caliber Mini 14 rifle. Yeah, we need to get the same process. The rifle is sent to the crime lab for further analysis. There, forensic technicians examine the gun and study the strike marks on the shell casings found at the crime scene. The 223 they took out of there matched perfectly with the round they recovered up in Aklutna. Robert Hansen is charged with murder, assault, and kidnapping. All right, listen, Bob. Despite his pleas of innocence, the evidence mounts against him. In exchange for a full confession, the district attorney agrees to charge Hansen with only four murders. Sherry Morrow, Aklutna Annie, Joanne Messina, and Paula Golding. Hansen accepts a plea deal. And I've read he chose those women because he himself had low self-esteem. 
I've heard other people say uh, prostitutes are chosen because they symbolize the evil that the killer sees in uh, all women. My personal opinion is uh, that Hanson chose prostitutes for a very simple reason. A prostitute will go anywhere at any time, any place, for anything. And when they disappear, no one cares. So nobody can see her. Hansen ultimately see admits he hunted humans, offering profilers one of the first glimpses into the sick and twisted mind of a sexual predator. He controlled the game from the point of abduction. What are you doing? He certainly had the rules. He, he controlled everything. There was no fear factor on his part. He was definitely the predator. They were the prey. Hansen admits he picked up a Klutna Annie for sex, then drove her to a remote area where he hunted bears. He killed her after she got scared and tried to make a break for it. Even Hansen couldn't tell police the victim's real name. And then there was Sherry Morrow, who agreed to meet Hansen under the guise of a modeling gig. Oh, OK, great, thanks. Once in his car, he handcuffed and blindfolded her, then headed to the Kanik River. When he tried to remove the cuffs, Sherry began kicking and screaming. Hansen took a rifle out of the trunk and waited for her to cool off. When Sherry charged him, he pointed the gun and pulled the trigger. Profilers believe Hansen became more brazen with each kill, ultimately choosing to take his victims by plane to his remote cabin. There, he would continue his brutal assault. Some of his victims uh, were with him for many hours. He kept them virtually overnight. Afterward, he would often strip them naked, blindfold them, and release them into the woods. Run. <laughs> no! turn him loose to hunt him down in some sick form of trophy hunting. And that's what the man was. He was a trophy hunter, and he collected things off the girls uh, after he killed them. Now, he wasn't able to view them every single day like he was his animal heads, so he overcame that obstacle by giving some of the jewelry to his wife and some to his daughter. According to Hansen, he always allowed his victim a brief head start then stalked her like a wild animal. He was aroused by their fear, he was aroused by their suffering, and then he was aroused by their terror when he began to hunt them. Hansen further confessed he equated his human hunts to going after a trophy doll sheep or a grizzly bear. The killing itself became anticlimactic, as even Hansen said. It was the torture, it was the hunt, it was the stalk that was exciting to Hansen. In the vastness of Alaska, Robert Hansen's killing spree continued for 12 years. Alaska presents an ideal environment for the type of killer that Robert Hansen was. What he liked to do was hunt. In all, Hansen confessed to 17 killings, but it's believed he had many more victims. He eventually identified 15 grave sites, 12 of which were unknown to investigators. Unfortunately, authorities recovered only seven bodies, likely due to the voracious animal activity in the Alaskan wilderness. Robert Hansen was sentenced to 461 years plus life with no chance of parole. His name has since been removed from the renowned trophy hunting record books.